Getting involved with this project was a dream come true for me. Uh, the Halo universe is ridiculously cool. It's something I've been attracted to and sort of in love with since it first uh, appeared uh, 10 years ago. And so when I got a call about this project, it was kind of a pinch me moment. I was like, that's not even a question. I'll do anything to be part of this project. This is amazing. It's made for web content primarily, which is a really interesting sort of um, new world for filmmakers, and it's really picked up momentum in the last couple of years. I like it because there's, in some ways, there's no rules, um, and you can kind of work however you think is best for the material. You're not hitting a specific time. You're not, you know, having to sort of cater to pre-existing notions. It's um, it's uncharted territory, so you can come up with a story and then put it in the framework that supports it the best way, which is really cool. The last Halo game, or Halo 3, ends with the sort of, you know, uh, infamous cliffhanger, uh, which anybody who plays the games knows, leaves Chief sort of floating through space uh, in cryosleep, and the last words he gives to Cortana are, wake me when you need me. Um, and in the very last sort of frames of that game, uh, you see that the forward into dawn, the crippled ship that he's on by himself, is heading towards this sort of mysterious, like glowing portal planet thing, and it's just this like, what the is that moment that left everybody like dying to find out more? And then Halo Four picks up from there, and you know takes you on a new adventure that people will obviously uh, learn about this fall. But we get to kind of tell the in between of those two things. So, as somebody who was like incredibly riveted slash frustrated by that cliffhanger, it's really cool to be able to pick up and, and keep going with it. Our story centers around a cadet named Lasky, who's this sort of um, disenfranchised, uh, unwilling kid who really doesn't see the merit in the system he's being brought up under and is resisting kind of this, what he believes to be, you know, sort of brainwashing. Um, and no sooner do we sort of like get to know him than the school is uh, suddenly under attack by aliens and these kids are forced to defend themselves uh, in this you know crazy sort of onslaught that they never imagined and uh, obviously sort of later in the story we receive help from the biggest hero in the Halo world, Chief. So Lasky is our main character and his sort of love interest sidekick is a girl named Kyler who is um, uh, this beautiful, headstrong girl who's sort of been brought up under um, under a bunch of tragedy that sort of crystallized her view on why she thinks the UNSC is right and why the cause that she's being trained for is absolutely correct. Um, and that puts her sort of at odds with Lasky's system of beliefs and they have sort of a friendly uh, running argument um, that keeps the two of them sort of at each other's throats but also engaged with each other. And then we have April, who's the squad leader for the cadets, and she's sort of a hard-ass, uh, robotic, you know, by-the-book kind of leader who, over the course of the story, is sort of thrown into a crazy situation and, and has to kind of find her humanity. Well, Tom was like an amazing discovery for us. He's an actor out of Australia who's a super young guy but has been doing a lot over there um, in the TV world, and our casting director, put him in front of us and everybody sort of immediately said like this is our Lasky. Um, he's got a really nice sort of combination of being um, a relatable guy but also sort of embodying that outcast spirit so um, there's something about him that just really clicked beautifully with this movie. Well she's an amazing contradiction because she is the sweetest girl next door but she's also I mean in person she's whip smart and incredibly hardworking. So she actually sort of represents the character that she had to play, which is on the one hand, super approachable and um, somebody you wanna hang out with. On the other hand, like a diehard, well-trained, hardworking, um, kick-ass soldier. Master Chief is played by Daniel Cudmore, who is probably the only uh, stunt person slash actor who's nearly seven feet tall in the world, at least he's the only one that I know of. Um, and he's amazing. He, we basically put him in this 45, 50 pound suit every day, which is the hottest, sweltering, sweatiest, uh, most difficult suit to inhabit, and asked him to do these sort of like deftifying 
stunts and, and physical stuff while acting as a central character with the kids, and he did it all with flying colors. Um, so he was an amazing asset to us. One of the biggest, uh, coolest things about the Halo universe, I think, is that you never see Master Chief's face. No one ever has, and um, who knows if we ever will. So basically, we needed to hire an actor who could represent the sort of physicality and the body acting of Master Chief. Um, without being able to use sort of the classic actor toolkit, which is their face. Um, so it was a tough challenge, but he did it amazingly. He, he really sort of was able to emote inside of that suit uh, behind a gold visor, despite not having, you know, not being able to see him. Fans can expect everything they love about the series, and hopefully, hopefully more. Our goal was to, to bring Master Chief into the flesh, as it were. It's our first significant sort of live action Master Chief um, and give everybody exactly what they are signing up for. But we also sort of, but we also wanted to make sure that this is a series that connects people to characters and story and emotion um, because that's what real human beings and actors can do that is much more difficult to do inside the framework of a video game. The team at 343 um, was adamant about wanting us to make this emotional and character driven. Um, you know, the action is all there, the, the special effects, the stunts, the aliens, they're all there, but they said from the very beginning that unless uh, the audiences care about who they're watching, it doesn't matter, and that's been sort of our guiding principle. I think we designed the series to play to two different audiences equally well, and hopefully we'll be able to pull it off. We want the Halo fans to feel like we have given them everything they wanted and more, uh, fleshed out the Halo world in a, in a new area and a new uh, way, given them a new set of characters that they, can, that they can fold into all of their existing sort of Halo lore and fall in love with just as much as they have. Um, and that we've launched them into Halo 4 in a way that gets them revved up and excited about what's to come for not just Halo 4, but for the next um, 10 years of the franchise. That's been sort of our goal. For people who don't know anything about Halo, we also wanted to make a series that's compelling, that's engaging, um, that's character-driven and pulls people in um, to a world they may not have known and, and, and shows them what those of us who have loved it forever love about it.